I was going to check this out too. I thought this was pretty interesting. This is a clip taken from Theo Vaughan's podcast where he speaks to Bert Kreischer and asks him if he's an alcoholic. And uh, the answer from Bert is really funny because it kind of reminds me um, why I don't like watching or listening to his podcast. That delusion and self-denial thing is just something that doesn't necessarily make him that appealing for me to watch in any way shape or form and also i've never really been a fan of that whole adult frat boy persona thing i think anybody i think in general i've always had an issue with people who have this imagined nostalgia you know people who pretend like they were from some bygone era and try and kind of you know attribute their life to this way of life or whatever it may be or maybe act older than what they are what no it's just annoying and even more so when somebody's trying to hold on to a part of their youth that they thought was really fun. It's just weird. It's like that. Um, it's like guys who wear hockey jerseys all the time or their hats backwards or they're super aggressive with the teams they just pull because all those things are tied to like their youth and things that they actually loved about themselves at one time. I think growing old gracefully is actually pretty cool. Having your time to be a little bit of a delinquent being dumb, being broke, having some money, having a family, or not having, not being able to hold down a relationship that suddenly you've got a family, all these kind of things. That's actually quite nice to have that kind of, those steps. Or sometimes just not figuring it out, but changing as a person, having the same interests all the time is pretty cool. And I feel like for whatever reason, Bert just doesn't have that. He's like a, he's like Peter Pan, but like a weird Peter Pan, right? A kind of a, an alcoholic, anxiety riddled Peter Pan. It's really, really strange. I've never really liked it. Honestly, it's never, it's, it's been one of the main things that's kind of put me off his podcast, even though I really like Bert Cast. And I think oddly enough, even though Bert interrupts their people a lot, he's actually one of the best interviewers. This is what I'm going to say. Controversial. Even though Bert inter interrupts people way often. And he has that horrible laugh and I know he can be really annoying. He's actually one of the most, probably one of the best interviewers, probably second to Ari Shafir. Ari Shafir is another really high level uh, podcast and interviewer who doesn't get the credit he deserves. But Bert is definitely up there, but his personality and this kind of delusion around his alcoholism is just too much to handle for me personally, just too much. But let's watch it anyway. This is a clip taken from the Fear of Warn Clips channel. As you can see here, that's the title. It says Bert Kreischer and Fear of Warn discuss alcoholism and drug addiction. And um, Bert's copiness is really sad, I feel like, especially considering this guy's what, in his 50s with a wife and kid and whatnot, and he's still holding on to his frat boy persona. I just think it's horrible. Let's continue. Let's play think that you're an alcoholic no i've been I've, I've run it through the ringer a few times dr drew's my litmus oh yeah and i've, I've talked to him about it. he's like you're not an alcoholic you just drink too much oh yeah the great dr drew he's definitely everyone's litmus test right oh for sure dr drew that's like getting flipping um cure advice on fucking liver king in it come on brother he's like al alcoholism is different <laughs> being powerless to alcohol is different than drinking a lot i drank a lot yesterday and i woke up in the middle of the night in a fucking sizzle. I mean, I was so hot, and all of a sudden, my body went and fucking poured sweat oh. back to sleep. Nah, -uh. yeah, yeah. Like almost like when a truck stops and it's like. It woke me up. I was so hot. I've never done. <sighs> I've never done the whole recovery thing. And uh, yeah, did you ever think about it? Because you go. Pre yeah. I mean, you go pretty hard. You know. Yeah, I think about it all the time. Yeah. I mean, the problem I have is. Uh, the problem I have is that what happens is when I feel like I'm going too hard, there's this internal kind of brother, 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 brother. I gotta be honest as well. To be fair to him, to be fair to him, I'm really thankful. As much as it was annoying to be forced to go to church after a certain amount of time, I'm actually happy that I was brought up in a church because it kind of avoided. I kind of missed a lot of things, and and I'm because I'm. Because I've got pride and I've got an ego and I've got these weird little things about me that don't allow me to kind of retroactively try to be, to go, to be cool or to try and experience things I didn't experience before. I just can't do it. So for the majority of my life, I spent what? Up until the age of 18, I spent it all in the church. So I didn't really get my first taste of an alcoholic beverage until maybe I was like 24, maybe really late in life right maybe even later than that i don't know was it 24 maybe 24 but i didn't have a first actual drink until that time 
So most of my time was spent just, you know, enjoying the friend, the, the company of my friends, completely sober, eating loads of food, hanging out in church and catching the vibe. But even with that being said, I spent an entire, a, a, a large part of my youth also going to clubs and whatnot and enjoying that side of things. And legitimately, I can say, like, I'm really lucky that I've never really loved booze to the point where, like, it's like a beverage to me. Like, I have to have it when I'm eating, when I'm having my dinner or something. I can just have a glass of water. I have nothing at all or a cup of tea or some coffee. I don't need it to, like, drink, to, to, to eat, right? I don't need it to survive in that regard. And also, I'm not that big of a booze aficionado where I know the difference between high class whiskeys and mid class whiskeys and wines and stuff so I'm very fortunate that's what I have to say I'm just very lucky maybe my genes maybe my upbringing maybe my temperament that's luck that's luck but also a side of me thinks part of alcoholism that's really fun is the sort of escapism right it kind of lets you tap out a little bit you get a bit of a buzz you get to kind of be a bit loose you sort of um if you're somebody that's maybe a bit uptight, you get a bit loose, you become a little bit outgoing, it kind of makes conversations a bit fun, but it's a pretty much a cool social thing to do with people. And I feel like sometimes, especially if you work a regular job, especially if you work in like the retail industry, you've worked in bars, you've worked in, you know, restaurants and stuff, after a long, hard day's work, sometimes someone giving you like a cold brew is really nice, right? Just to kind of end the day like, oh, or maybe going out for some drinks after work in the office with your office pals. It's just a nice way to kind of disconnect from all the trouble. Like, oh, your manager's an asshole, whatnot. Cool. But it's sort of like a reward for putting up with the weekly hassles that you have. Even daily hassles. Maybe your partner's annoying you at home. You have an annoying housemate. Whatever. But that's ma ma mainly what it is. A part of me thinks this is extra losery with someone like a Bert. Because he's essentially living a 1% lifestyle, right? 1% to lifestyle, 5% to lifestyle. Where he gets to go on stage and tell jokes. He takes his t-shirt off and gets an applause from the crowd. He goes on a podcast that he doesn't spend any time researching topics or anything. He just blurts out his dumb opinions and makes some jokes and stuff. And gets paid hundreds of thousands of dollars. Maybe sometimes millions. Does tours and gets paid millions. He's producing his own movie that's probably going to be pretty good and successful. Like... A really cushy life. I'm thinking to myself, if that's the facts and you're living a really cushy life, where, what would be the need to be like drunk all the time? Because like I said, my association with drinking was escapism from like hating my regular life or a way to kind of tap out from the drudgery of my regular life or just a way to just enjoy company with friends. But number one, you don't see friends all the time. You're not trying to tap out from life every single day. And, you know, you're in a bit of a funk, so it makes some sense. You don't earn that much money. Maybe the one thing that gives you a bit of, you know, pleasure in your life is having a bit of a drink. But surely if you've quote unquote made it, right, and you're a murderer, as the guys like to say, why are you abusing alcohol to this level? And that may be a quintessential alcoholic issue. That might be one of the bases of it because I can't see anything, again, just judging from the outside in. I don't know this guy personally, don't know who he is, but I can't see anything from the outside in that could justify someone of Bert's level of success with it being okay to just wake up and drink a box of wine right it doesn't make any sense you're a multi-millionaire podcaster and stand-up comic like your life is set you make your own schedule you put all your kids through school by telling embarrassing stories about them when they're growing up you have a wife that's clearly okay with your lifestyle and you know is a great partner and is able to raise like it, everything seems to be pretty decent from what you speaks about so I just don't find, I just can't understand what scenario would mean me to be like drinking and pounding it back like that. I don't, I don't understand it. I don't get it. I don't get it. And also, just look at it from just a purely aesthetic point of view. Look at his face. If that's what alcoholic, if that's what alcohol does to you, if that's what being a beast of a comic does to you, I don't want any points of it. He's red and inflamed all over. Maybe that's a skin condition thing, maybe. But he's also very, very puffy. Like, he's got that Brendan Schaub stung by a million bees, you know, big up flipping Fear of War in that regard. It's not necessarily a good advert for boozing, is it, really? I don't know. Maybe it's just me. I don't know. I, I don't know. I think if you're set in life, surely there should be a point where you maybe rein it in a little bit uh, or maybe limit it to your actual wins. But I don't know.
maybe there's something I'm missing. Maybe there's parts of his life that we're not really that aware of. Who knows? But let's just hear the rest of it. Of a uh, metronome in me that goes, it's time to slow down. It's time to, you got it. Let's, let's do a couple nights off. Let's, you know, and not the way like a regular person would drink, go. Oh, uh, hold on. Dave H. Is that true? He's saying here that Bert has said something about his dad, um, maybe essaying him back in the day. Oh, okay. Maybe that might explain it. <laughs> because, like I said, having been a long time listener of Bert Cast back in the day, like I said, I said that in before, unpopular opinion, he's actually one of the better interviewers out there, even though he interrupts a lot. You know, but over a time, I just couldn't put up with how insufferable and delusional he was. It just got too much that I had to just tap out silently. But I was a fan of Bert Cast before. I didn't know that. I really didn't know that. I really didn't know that. I really didn't know that he, that was what he shared about his dad. If that's the case, and that does explain a lot, because for me, I can't understand how somebody that clearly has probably the cushiest job in the world. I wouldn't say it's enviable. I don't say everyone wants to be a stand up comic, but in terms of having a great lifestyle, he definitely has it. Why would he want to be drinking himself to, you know, to a stupor to a point where he's blacking out at home and having the shakes and stuff and sweating in bed and popping Xanaxes? It's just like, come on, man, get a grip. We'll just drink on weekends, you know, and I'll be like, I'll just, I won't drink Monday, Tuesday, you know. So yeah, Uche made a good point. People that are, people that are okay don't drink like Bert does. That's a perfectly um, succinct way to, of saying that, to be honest, isn't it? People that are okay, exactly, exactly. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, are like, this is going to sound, this is going to be the most horrific statement you'll ever hear me say on a podcast, trust me. But like, or or you'll go, let's, let's not drink on private jets. You know, like that's like if you're buying a private jet to get yourself to work, maybe you should use that as that really expensive uh, plane. Now we understand why. I'm not sure if you guys have seen it, but the entire Your Mum's House community, or some, the majority of it, let's say, has kind of turned on, you know, Tom Segura and Christina P because they kind of, you know, they've kind of lost their way. They're kind of starting to um, think their shit don't stink anymore, but they just got more rich and a bit disconnected from what they used to be. And maybe it's just, you know, just a natural course of a comedian. You you start off a bit edgy and then once you start turning more money and whatnot, you become a bit more neutered or you start to get annoyed at your fans because they're, weirdly enough, the more success you get, they kind of demand more from you. But that rich guy talk is funny because it's really turned a lot of people off and he just slipped in there that he won't limit his time he's drinking to private jets. <laughs> Honestly, man. Imagine drinking a box wine on a private jet or bringing, sneaking in little whiskeys into a private jet. Like, what? Like, surely, like, come on, man. Plane ticket as a time to uh, recover and, and work hard and read a script and not just part of your fucking dick off like I have the whole time I've ever gotten private jet. I get on a private jet and I'd be like, if I'm paying 13000 30000 whatever I'm paying for a flight, I'm partying my fucking dick off. Yeah. We're eating edibles. Yeah. We're fucking Xanax. It's like, brother. yeah, I'm going to fucking get fucking wasted. Oh, dude. That indulging is just funny. You know, look at Tia's space. I love how he just indulges. There is no, uh, there's nothing else. He loves a treat in it. That's the best thing. Loves a good treat. Loves a good reward for just existing. <laughs> <laughs> and then and then I started going, no, I should probably not do that. I should probably use this as a time to work on my business. Because yeah. it's a business expense, technically. I drank perfectly in Italy. Oh wow. Perfectly. I mean, so here's my thing with drinking. If I if I day drink, it fucks me up. I can't day drink really. So like I can only drink I, I need to have that's why the road works well for me because I don't have my first drink till like midnight. Oh wow. And yeah, yeah. So I'll I'll drink midnight till two, whenever mm -hmm. bus call is. Maybe have a pop on the bus. Not lately because I have acid Actually, reflux. Usually you just have a couple of drinks, you know, after the show, two or three drinks, and then on the bus, go to sleep. Maybe hit a vape pen, let a joint, go to bed, and, and I'm out. Listen to a podcast, I'm out. And then wake up the next day a little late, but I don't drink the whole fucking day. So that's really good for me. Because day drinking, if I that's why I don't drink on jets or, or I drink on planes. This is the thing that used to annoy me when I was listening to Burt Cast. This like rambling thing that he'd do to convince himself that he's not drinking too much. It just pissed me off because it's pure it's like an in, it's like an anxiety insecurity sort of thing like a self-speak like who you're trying to convince we don't care like just move on but he tried to convince himself that he's not to drink too much he's actually quit drinking he's only been drinking during the weekday you only had one drink you know today that's a monday like uh, that's a, i don't know whatever it's just it was annoying he's doing it a lot now because i if i day drink on a plane then it goes out 
throughout the day and then that really puts a dent on your on your on your wellness like you just feel like shit your sweat smells like piss you're shaky your piss like, smells like sweat <laughs> no your sweat smells like piss too both and, of them yeah both of them i mean when you're in my balls smelled i drank all day yesterday yeah. fucking uh, started at like seven so you just did it yeah yesterday but i, I but i were i busted my ass in the gym today so it got out of me yeah but uh my balls smelled the He's actually got a decent tan on his well, doesn't he? He's actually got a decent tan. Like, his arms look nice and olive. He's clearly been enjoying a good summer and getting out there in the ocean and bathing and whatnot and being in a good climate. But his face just, like, screams, screams algae, isn't it? Crazy. The worst anyone's mm. balls have ever smelled in their entire life. Mm. When I got in the shower to come here, I took a little dab and sniff, and I was like, Whew, that's worse than armpits. Oh. That's fucking, and that was that was booze. So, Dude, how yeah. jealous do you think the front, the the? How jealous do you think the back of your balls are of the front of your balls, dude? <laughs> the front of your balls hangs out with your dick. Yeah. Yeah. I'd much rather hang out with a dick than Let's, an asshole. Me. Too. Let's have three sixty. This is not going. I thought I, was, I thought he was going to ask him how jealous you think your fans are that you get to. You know, how just you think your other fifty-year-old dad fans feel that you just get to act like a like a frat Chad boy, like you know, in this old age, while they're slaving away at their horrible jobs that they hate. To imagine is being back there. It's like living in the slums. It's like <laughs> it's like a it, you like to be alive. I love being alive. It's like my favorite part of being alive is loving that you're alive right like if you just kind of go i'm alive you know there's times where i'm you know there's times where i'm i wake up and i'm rough this is when we're, when we're talking about like the recovery brain of like man what, what what should i do and then i think the difference is i wake up and if i feel a little down a little depressed maybe a little hungover maybe a little shaky from partying too hard i go you have two options today you can lose today you can lose it you're, you're, you're allowed to you're allowed to take a xanax tap out get back in bed Crank up the AC, throw on Netflix. Controversial. Put it on a Spanish speaking oh. cooking. I saw you just saying something about Serb October. Controversial opinion here. I don't think Bert did Serb October this year or last year. I think he I think he broke it ages ago. I just don't think he said nothing. I don't think so. Because I remember the year that Bert did actually do Serb October, which might have been the last time they did it. And he legitimately looked incredible after just a couple of weeks of not boozing. He lost a mad amount of weight. His face went really, really slim. Um, his skin wasn't as red and patchy and plotchy. I guess what I remember also is that you could tell he actually has a skin allergy. I think I forgot what it is. He actually has something of his skin. You could see it was actually a skin issue and less of, of a mix between him being bloated because of the booze and the skin issue. He looked incredible. Like He did lo lose a lot of weight. And that usually happens a lot if you're somebody that boozes a lot. You'd let, you end up losing a lot of water weight pretty quickly. But the fact that he looked fairly the same when they did do the roundup pod made me know that he didn't really do so in October. He, he lied for sure, 100%. The one last year, he 100% lied. Show and just go to sleep. For the whole day, you can do that. Or you can choose to win the day where you get up, you have a coffee, you barrel through it, you go to the gym, you work out, and you just ignore that voice in your head that goes, hey man, we're, we're not gonna be able to do this today. You go, I'm not listening to you today. I chose to seize today and, and 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 knowing for me knowing that i have that tap out of like hey we can call it a day we can wake up and call it a day make a breakfast sandwich eat a xanax watch mm. netflix crank up the ac blackout curtains sleep wake up at eight and yo my computer's struggling up now absolutely struggling have a cocktail with your wife and have a great fucking day we can do that or we can push through the day we can get up early we can go Mm, I think we can stop playing this stream or stop playing this clip because my computer is absolutely crying. But yeah, you get the gist. You get the gist. Uh, Bert's in denial. Uh, Theo's loving it as a recovering addict, seeing somebody clearly denying that they're clearly having an issue there. It kind of is what it is, I guess, to a certain extent. Um, it would be better if he would maybe would admit the position that he's in at the moment. But, you know, what can you do? What can you do?